WDON1204.com. Community focused, globally connected. Find us online at Coleman Global. WDON is proud to present our latest podcast, The Colors of Sound. Our mission is to create a safe space for community members from around the world to share their personal stories. Listen on all streaming platforms or on our podcast station, WDON1204.com. The Colors of Sound podcast. Discover how much we have in common. So, man, like New York City, you've born and raised where you reside. Born what do you love about it? In the Bronx, and I've been like so blessed to be. You know, I'm all New York. You know, some everybody loves their borough, and I love all my boroughs. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm all the boroughs wrapped in one. And I've been blessed to live in everyone: Brooklyn, Staten Island, um, you know, Queens. You know, really quickly, some a little bit longer, but you know, I got love for New Yorkers all in general. So I feel like part of my purpose is to bring New York to Gap as a blended family. That, because we do have some seriously forgotten areas, so that would be dope. Yeah, the Bronx. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly naming, you know. <laughs> I, I love it. I love anybody from the Bronx who's doing anything creative, anything amazing. You know, yeah, I just got nothing bad to say about anybody who can come from here and make it, you know, like, you know, whether it's uh, Cardi B, Fat Joe, whoever, I love them all. I feel like, you know, Stan Lee from the Bronx. You know? He is, is so interested in uh, creating the story of the Bronx and writing, you know, what they believe about it without having spent any time here, you know, without like really spending some quality, quality time eating the food, meeting the people, you know, knowing the real vibe of what's going down. So I like how you're you're approaching it, you know, and, and really more than just changing the Bronx, you are on the way of changing the world. So, I mean, I want to jump in with <laughs> Pretzel Boy. Like, how did you, like for anybody who hasn't heard of it yet, right? Like, how are you describing this to people? And, and how did you get started on that particular journey? Well, for anybody looking, you can go on Amazon.com uh, and find it on the Pretzel Boy or my website, the Adventures of Pretzel uh, to get an exclusive copy. Uh, or you could find it on my website, uh, Mr. Finnessy uh, Official. Um, but the Pretzel Boy book has just been a really fun phenomenon that really has been taking a life on its own. You know, as a creator, I've created many things, but this is the first thing that I've ever created. And it just had a whole entire life of its own and just bringing crowds of all background together, which was intentional. So to kind of see this all come to life and it go from uh, just a book and from a book now to uh, really in the process of becoming an animated series uh, by a network who wanted to release it. Uh, uh, but then uh, so many other networks are tapping in and you know, really take an interest. In Principal has taken a whole life of its own and the beauty of just watching him co come from like uh, idea to paper to life and animation is uh, nothing less than magical. So just to really be a part of this amazing journey of creating this amazing larger than life character and uh, really watching the impact that he's already had on the world behind the scenes. I just can't wait to see what he's going to do, you know, on that larger scale. You know, people have no idea of the backstory. Of what's going on. <laughs> you, watch, you watch these books and they become amazing books and iconic, you know, characters where, you know, it's not really till you watch these behind the scenes stories of like what it took to get there. You That's know? right. And just really like the, the people and the hands and, well, the, we, you know, inspiration. It's That's just, right. It's always a, Thing of its own. That's right, because I mean, like, we're just, you know, we're consumers. So we're sitting on the couch and we see a final product. We don't see how many days, minutes, hours, weeks, years it took to get something to come to life. We just see the final product. And and as humans do, we sit and criticize that final product, right? But this yeah, actually yeah. sounds like a super exciting um, opportunity for a lot of different age groups. So, like, what's his story? What's Pretzel Boy? What's he... What's he getting into? What's his, what's his, uh, 
his raison d'etre. You know what I'm saying? Like, was <laughs> <laughs> you know? I think the fun thing about Pretzel Boy is he really is uh, misunderstood, and he's just representing uh, those of us who also may feel like that as well. I feel like uh, just definitely having a bit of an urban experience in his life of you know morphing in from this uh, object to obviously a, a, a boy. And then having uh, everyone uh, either want to consume him or want a piece of him uh, in the process of principally just trying to be himself, really, uh, he's faced with all these, you know, adversaries of, uh, you know, people uh, feeling they have the right to uh, consume him, uh, hurt him, harm him, touch him, whatever. All these things are coming at him and he's just trying to live his life. So, you know, the process of him just trying to live his life as, uh, you know, melody native people we tend to know pretty well you will get painted uh, a story of being a menace you know with how you may react to uh, how society may be treating you so you know in that you kind of see the those things kind of play out as a role of uh you know menace or hero you kind of decide but uh in the process of him just really being himself he's like a it's a liberating thing so really with the intention of creating pretzel boy uh with the inspiration of I say children of all ages, because do we ever really grow up with the things that, you know, make our hearts uh, smile and, you know, big and move and, you know, we really quickly go back to those eras of childhood. So uh, my intention of uh, creating Pretzel Boy honestly was inspired by um, uh, Eloise in the Plaza and uh, the socialite who created her was this, uh, you know, uh, fabulous woman named Kay, I forget her last name, and uh, this amazing artist who had captured her vision. And uh, just the dynamic of the backstory of, you know, creating this iconic New York character really was uh, intentional with me. So studying the blueprint of, you know, just Eloise in the Plaza, I really was, you know, curious of putting my spin on that and uh, fusing it, of course, with, uh, I say, the uh, putting a new twist on an old tale. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, familiar uh, gingerbread, but principal is nobody's gingerbread. Like, get that yeah, out of here. No, like, that, uh, definitely like, not. 2008, you know, like <laughs> this is like <laughs> a whole new era, a whole new thing. And, you know, with principal just explaining his um, background, you know, he is this creature, you know, who uh, gets morphed into a little boy and uh, in the process of him trying to, you know, live his honest truth in his life. He is uh, confronted with uh, a lot of people who uh, may have an intention of him mm -hmm. that may be his intention. Mm -hmm. So in the liberation of just kind of finding his own voice and having these uh, fun musical abilities to when he's faced with, you know, any uh, adversaries, he just has these ability to kind of flip the script and, he uses music as his tool, you know, so uh, just as the radio, he just is the voice of uh, this generation and so many different ones. So it's it's really using music that you see he knows how to kind of unintentionally or maybe it's intentionally mm -hmm. bring people together. I love it. Uh, without them even knowing it. Mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, just, the, the, it's the far more of, organic. Just, yeah. It's far more organic and just the spirit of just, you know, how he is. He's, he's a riot and he's funny. So... Watching him come to life and, uh, you know, really touch kids really has been very inspirational. So watching him turn into an animation, just wanting to see what, you know, that would do. And how it's going to uh, be received. I mean, how it's going to be received, you know, it's just one of those things to where, you know, it's just, uh, it's, you know, it's fun. It's nerve wracking. It's all those things. I love it. I love it, man. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. So Talk to me about, because I know for, because I know you, right? I know that Pretzel Boy and being a writer and a publisher, a producer, an animator, you know, like those are not the only hats that you wear. Those are not the only roles that you have. You're also an actor, right? And there's other things that, that, okay. that, um, that I've witnessed of yours that are, I mean, like there's so much talent and, and I can't wait for the world to really start to experience more of of james right so what are some of the Thank other you. like what brought you into entertainment like was that because someone was inspiring to you is that because it was just always inside of you like what put you on this path and do you feel like uh you're living your purpose 
You know, it's so funny that you say that. The first thing that flashed uh, in my mind was I just remember growing up as like uh, this really reserved guy, uh, not being able to really voice who I was uh, and be uh, the best version of myself because I just remember being this uh, kid being bullied. It was so wrong, you know, and it was just so skinny and so uh, abusable. But I just remember, you know, uh, it has so much spirit. But I, looking back at that, as you just said that, it really reminded me of um, how sometimes we're placed in different scenarios where they uh, can be seeds to kind of, you know, break your spirit and you're not really, you know, in your truth. And I remember I had to take this night school class and um, it was full of like maybe 40 people per class. And I remember this teacher in particular. Miss Johnson, who was just like, uh, you know, God bless, she was sexual chocolate. She was just this beautiful, brown skinned, gorgeous woman. She was Mrs. Jones, was her name, Mrs. Jones. And I could see why they say, I used to sing to that song, that song to her, Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones. She was bad. Mrs. Jones was so gorgeous. But just for the fun of it, she just was so encouraging. I just remember uh, it was an English class I had to repeat. Uh, there was a lot of writing involved, and she was so inspirational and making sure that I always read whatever uh, project that I had mm -hmm. had to write first. And I just remember I felt comfortable because I got a chance to really write comedy, mm -hmm. which is really my heart. Mm -hmm. So I got a chance to be funny. And I just remember it was the first chance that I kind of got a glimpse into that side of my personality of like controlling the crowd, right. you know, and being funny and being engaging. And I was like, who is this person? I, and it was funny because I almost could write a script on it. I remember going to my regular school and not being popular, mm -hmm. but going to night school and having this whole personality of popularity. And my friend was like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and it's duality. I'm yeah. just like, you could, they didn't know who I was. They didn't know I could have been a loser or whatever in my school, which I was. But in this night school, for what being so funny and being able to kind of be like accepted and loved for my brain and my ideas just really being on. Yeah. And I remember I couldn't turn myself on like that in every environment. It was just right there mm -hmm. alone. I was able to do in that flash of just like that class. And I remember going through cycles where I couldn't turn that back on. And I think that was just a glimpse to me of just what I feel the higher power of God just was just introducing me into of like, these are all the tools that you kind of have to go to to grow, yeah, to right. learn, how to be able to, you know, manage to do these things. But that's it was right. like kind of growing into the future. So just being, you know, in that class and just having that laughter, it kind of just like bit me, you know, like not as a class clown, but endeared as a, a class writer with other writers, you know, it was very um, encouraging for mm -hmm. me. So I think that kind of set the path for me to kind of really want to be around and amongst other creators and even in searching to find that in those paths having great amazing mentors to help inspire me to be able to get to those skills so uh, i'm very powerful. grateful i think that you just said that it just gave me that flash yeah, no that's really powerful <laughs> it's all just, i say that to say you know you go through these stages of like becoming and i think that was the first stage of me getting a glimpse of becoming into uh the role of you know writer mr finn is a creator mm -hmm. you know and just path and it takes as you know mm -hmm. um, a fellow creator yourself you know it is definitely a path that's absolutely i don't right. know if it's a path I necessarily chose on my own you know? <laughs> it's not one you wish it on people you know <laughs> we don't choose that it's a hard life it's a hard not life. it is a hard <laughs> not life that that's absolutely right i mean but you know what it i think for anybody who is searching for their reason, right? Searching for their purpose, for searching yeah. for their like innermost passion that's gonna like last for the, for the rest of their time and live on beyond them, right? Because I think a lot of the things that we we choose to do and we wind up doing in life, we don't know uh, the ripple effects of all of those things, right? Which is what takes me back to Pretzel Boy and that you know that's that has the absolute vibe and potential to affect generations of people right and i think that in and of itself makes the birthing process even that much more fun well fun and hard <laughs> <laughs> 
Birth ain't never no easy for that's nobody. Right. That's somebody's mama. That's right. Listen, it ain't never okay. it ain't never been promised. Never nothing. Easy. Nothing worth it is ever easy, right? That's right. <laughs> nothing that's worth it is ever gonna be easy. Uh, you know, I, I love that you're saying that. Thank you for even saying that because I feel like you know, I think uh until you really go through those type of um growing pains, you really don't understand the depth of the gratitude that one needs to be able to have the capacity to hold those things. That's right. I think, you know, you're so caught up in the ego. And, you know, I'm joking right now that, you know, talk about how hard it is, but, you know, there's, there's lessons. And I think there's seeds, you know, find the seeds, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, in those, within the heart, there are seeds. You know, you find them and you refine you and you're on to the next so you know even in that i try to even add some of those elements even in the stories of uh principal mm -hmm. and extending it and having the amazing opportunity uh to turn it uh with a really good friend of mine uh you know karen uh skybow amazing talent who helped me co-write the um animated series and you know really just the inspiration of like wanting to capture a animated comedy series you know like that was important to me like you know i'm looking at some i'm not trying to down anybody's you know uh creative artistic process but there's so many things that tend to just blur i just feel like everything just is so blurred yeah so yeah. you know listen i mean i think that's that's a very fair statement right we've we've been inundated with a thousand streaming stations that all have full rosters of content everything is not going to be good i mean it really was a matter of uh it took seven hard long years <laughs> to get to a point where we could get it to you know uh you know animation it's, it doesn't happen overnight having amazing mentorships from huge production companies these things that go into it but people have no idea so you know to create an animation of this size uh it is definitely uh, one that I could say is probably uh, maybe one of the biggest but hardest things I've ever had to do, but maybe one of the most rewarding creative wise. Uh, so it's so rich. I can't wait for people to see it. You've, you've got a little glimpse of it, Tim, uh, but uh, I just really can't wait for people to see the, uh, the, the finished, best, uh, rod, polished project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of it. I think it really would be such a treat, you know, for people right now. I love it. I love it. So. All right, so we have plenty of things to expect from you. We know that you're multi-talented. Um, give us your website address again. Uh, it is theadventuresofpretzelboy.com. I'm sorry, it's so long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> figure out a way to abbreviate it quickly. Um, but yeah, just uh, you can Google that or you can Google Mr. Finnessy, uh, P-H-I-N-I-Z-Y, and uh, just really go and... Uh, get a, get a, your hands on the book if you're a librarian if you are a teacher if you are a parent if you are a uncle uncle auntie uh whoever you are i don't know that's right somebody's nana grandma come on you even... have a kid <laughs> who you love or you are the kid i don't care it's for kids of all ages get yourself a copy of the book i guarantee you are going to just love it it is a really fun tale for all i think so maybe tim will tell you uh, he can say, but I think it's a fun tale for all. Listen, I, I, I think it's going to be amazing. I think it's going to be well received. You might get a couple of Thank emails you. from the Usher board, but I think everybody is really <laughs> going to. <laughs> right? No, these are the kids they love to pinch. Um, so as you think about your legacy, right, and, and you've just given some amazing prophetic vision, and I pray blessings and prosperity upon you, like just showered to the you. point where you got to put on a shower cap with it. All right. Um, Thank you, but bro. when you see, uh, amen. So when you get to the part where you think about your own legacy, right. And, and even though you're building it and living it and, and the plane is still flying already because there's already all these other things that you've already done. As you think about that yeah. legacy, what is it that you want to leave people um, that you want to leave people with, that you want people to speak about you, you know, once you've transitioned, what, what does that look like your, your life's work? I think the reoccurring thing that I want to, I said, I want to hear, um, I would like to do from just working with people to, you know, saying, yeah, I think that's what I want to hear, uh, mm -hmm. is people just saying, you know, you inspired me, James, to do bop, bop, bop. Mm -hmm. I don't know what bop, bop, bop is. It could be 
different things for, for different, different people. That's different right. Folks. But it, uh, it inspired you to move, uh, take action, uh, and some form of value in yourself that you shifted, thought different, moved different. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if I managed to do that, I would have won, right? There you go. So it's the power of uh, influence to inspire someone to kind of just turn that inward and see, like, you know, God created you to be uh, the individual that you are, mm-hmm. your work to do. Yeah. In that work of tuning into whatever that is, because it's different for different people. I just want to say thank you, Tim. You have been such an inspiration to me, just uh, always in energy and love Thanks, and leadership. What you do for the Bronx, people don't know what you do. I don't think people, enough people know what you do. <laughs> and, and it's like always the leaders who do the most that don't get the, the most recognition. And I just want to say, I see you. I thank you for what you do for the Bronx. We thank have you. a lot of work to do together for the Amen. Bronx. That's right. Uh, so I'm going to be tapping on you. That's right. That's right. Listen. <laughs> like we got some stuff to do uh, because I want to see the Bronx in a better place. I don't feel like that's that right now in a certain economy. And I feel like uh, there are people who are of influence who could do more. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we need to be tapping on the shoulders, you know, that's because right. we need that's to. That's right. We need to be able to create a place and a space and a borough that we could take pride in. And there's so many things going on that I'm just really not happy with. Just the a lot of the youth, uh, you know, really these robberies, these, you know, yeah. crime. You know, but I have to tell uh, you, if they hurt. had more engaging things to do that were That's positive, we, the story would be different. Right? So definitely get the book. Definitely become a fan. Please, you know, like and follow everything that James is doing so that you can be, you know, the amongst the first that see when everything comes to life. I love being this far in advance of uh, the full vision coming out for everybody else. Like, you have no idea how amazing it's going to be. I'm so excited. Um, thank you so much for joining us again here at the Colors of Sound podcast. You can check <laughs> us out on our website at WDON1204.com. Uh, You can also hear our podcast on all of the major stations. So we thank you for your support. Thank you for listening. And uh, we wish you well.